there are three types of research methods. One is historical method where the researcher is interested in finding out what happened in the past. There is another type of method which is known as survey methods. In survey method, the researcher is interested in finding out the status, what is happening today. But there is a third type of method which is known as experimental method. And in this experimental method, the researcher is interested in finding out what will happen in future if I use a variable to effect another variable. It is an attempt to establish a cause and effect relationship by administering a treatment to one group and not administering or withholding it from the other group. Let us see some of the terms related to experimental method. Subject. Who are the subjects? Subjects are persons or individuals who participate in an experiment where we administer a treatment or we do not administer a treatment but they are in the group. They are the people. What is a treatment? Treatment is an independent variable which we think would have an effect on some other behavior. Treatment is an event or activity which would induce an effect or which is expected to have some kind of outcome. The third term we must know is an observation. What is an observation? It refers to the act of collecting data while we conduct the experiment. It involves different types of measurements, but still it is observation. What is important in experimental method is variables. There are three types of variables. One is independent variable, other is dependent variable, and third, which is not so important, but yes, it may make a difference that is called intervening variable. What is independent variable? Independent variable is a treatment. It does not change. It has an impact on some other variable which is known as dependent variable. What is dependent variable? Dependent variable changes. It reduces or it increases or it changes as per the change in independent variable. If you change the intensity of independent variable, it may have effect on dependent variable. The third type of variable is intervening variable. Intervening variables are variables which may affect the whole experiment. For example, if you arrange for very nice sitting arrangement for experimental group and shabby arrangement for control group, then it may have impact. The experimental group attends in the morning when they are fresh, whereas the control group attends the experiment at evening or at the end of the day when they are tired. So these are the variables, even the teacher, these are the variables which a researcher can control and see that there is no difference while conducting an experiment. As we said that this treatment is given to one group and treatment is withhold or withheld from another group. Now where we give the treatment, that group is called experimental group. Where we do not give the treatment is called a control group. So the independent variable or the treatment is used with the experimental group and it is not used by for the other group which is known as control group. With these two groups, experimental group and control group, there are two other terms associated with. What are these terms? One is pre-test and other is post-test. As you would know from pre-test, the pre-test is given prior to conducting the experiment and post-test is given after the treatment is given. So the pre-test is termed as T1, the scores are considered as T1 and the post-test scores are considered as T2. And the difference between T1 and T2, this is the difference the researcher is interested in. Is there a difference? If at all there is a difference, is it significant difference? And why is this difference? So these are the questions which generally the researcher answers. And for that, the researcher must have two groups and also must have pre-test and post-test. 
there are many different types of designs, but the strategy remains same. See this visual which shows us the basic strategy of any experimental design. We have to get two groups or there can be more groups also, but two groups we are seeing here group A and group B. They are equated, they are equal on some of the aspects which a researcher think may affect the score on the treatment. So, they are equated and there it is seen that whatever you give them is similar except the treatment. Now, you see the group A that is experimental group is given a treatment and the control group B is not given a treatment. We are withholding the treatment from them. After the treatment, we are again testing both the groups and if there is a difference between the scores of group A and group B, then we say that this may be because of the treatment. This is the basic strategy of any experimental design. We will also see essential characteristics of experimental design, but before going there, let us see some of the examples where these terms are used. Now, as a teacher, you may be interested in increasing or enhancing reading comprehension of your students. So, you have developed some program which you think will enhance students reading comprehension. Now, there are two variables, one is your program and other is reading comprehension. What is going to change? You expect that reading comprehension will change, it should enhance or it should not diminish, it should not reduce, at least it will remain same or it will increase. So, the changes are going to be brought in reading comprehension score. So, that is called dependent variable. And what is going to change that? Our program which you have designed and which you think will be useful in changing that. So, this program is called independent variable or a treatment. There are some students in your class who are disruptive or who may be behaving in indisciplined manner. Now, you want to change their behavior and you think that if you appreciate their other good things or write appreciative notes to their parents, they may change their behavior. Now, you want to try this out as an experiment. So, you start sending appreciative notes to their parents and you want to see the change in the behavior. Now, again there are two variables. You want to change the indisciplined behavior or disruptive behavior of the students. So, that becomes a dependent variable because it is going to change and the appreciative notes are independent variables. In both the cases, you will have score. Dependent variable will give you a score. Previously to sending the notes is one that is called pretest. there will be one score that is T1. After you give this treatment, you will again test their behavior which would again give you another score that is called T2. And you are going to see the difference between T1 and T2. That is why when you are working with scores, when you are working with numbers, this is called quantitative method. So, experimental method is a quantitative method of research. Let us see essential characteristic of experimental method. There are many, but let us concentrate on four. One is control, other is manipulation, third is observation and fourth is replication. Now, let us see one by one. What is control? Control is a characteristic which refers to the extent to which different factors in an experiment are accounted for because ultimately the researcher is interested to find out whether this effect is because of the independent variable, because of the treatment. So, he or she has to be extra careful in having a control over all the variables, all the factors which may contribute to the effect which he or she is not intending. What is the purpose of control? That is why the first purpose of control is to isolate things, isolate independent variable from any other intervening variables so that they do not have any effect on the dependent variable. 
So achieving isolation is one purpose of control. Another one purpose of control is achieving quantitative evaluation. As I said earlier, it will give you a score. So we are talking about evaluating something which is a quantitative evaluation. There can be qualitative evaluation as well, but in experimental design, we try to have quantitative evaluation. The third purpose of control could be achieving changes in magnitude. Magnitude is a vector which has a distance, but which also has a direction. So in which direction the changes are taking place? Are, are they increasing something or are they decreasing something? In our example earlier, we want to increase the reading comprehension, but we want to decrease the indisciplined behavior. We want to decrease the disruptive behavior of the students. So there is a direction involved in which the researcher is interested. And that's why control on various factors is very essential. Other essential characteristic of experiment is manipulation. This refers to deliberate operation of conditions by the researcher. The researcher is manipulating various conditions. It is a predetermined sets of situations which are created by the researcher and it also refers to control because you are manipulating certain things in order to get full control on the experiment. What is the ultimate desire? We must identify that the effect on the dependent variable is only because of independent variable and nothing else. Otherwise, what will happen? There may be some other variables which are having effect on dependent variable and the researcher may be thinking that it is because of independent variable, which is not so. I will give you one example where independent variable will take the same example of reading comprehension. While using that program which you have developed, you want to see whether this program enhances or increases reading comprehension of the students. Sometimes it may happen in your group, control group, the students are of younger age and in your experimental group, students are of a little older age, their average age is older. Now you didn't realize it, you thought this is, we are only uh, using the independent variable. But now what happens, maybe because of more understanding, more maturity, your experimental group is showing better increase in their reading comprehension. But can you only say account it for independent variable or is it because of their age? Is it because of their maturity? Maybe. So the researcher has to be very clear and very confident that he or she has controlled, manipulated variables so that the difference, the, the effect of independent variable on dependent variable is very clearly shown. The third essential characteristic of experimental method is observation. This observation is of dependent variable because dependent variable is going to change. So how to observe that? We can do this observation in variety of ways. We can use many tools, we can use test, we can use observation schedule, several things can be used, but ultimately they will give you some score. The fourth essential characteristic of experimental method is replication. As the term says, replication is doing it again. You can replicate. Why do we want to replicate that? We are generalizing our results. We are saying this is the cause and this is effect. Now, once you have said, other people also may be interested in seeing whether it is really true. So they will replicate that. Using the same conditions, the experiment can be replicated. This is about other people doing it. But a researcher also may be interested in replicating the subsections of the experiment. The experiment is huge. Now, there are many variables. So the same variable, some of the sets of variables can be replicated in some other situation so that the generalizability increases. We are talking about say the effect of your program on reading comprehension. Reading comprehension of 8 standard students, 9 standard students or 12 standard students. 
you can replicate the experiments in variety of situations and see whether you get the same results. What happens here because of replication, the generalizability increases. You also can make multiple comparisons because the experiment is replicated in different situations using different variables of the subjects. You can compare whether this reading comprehension program was effective for 12 standard students or it was effective for 8 standard students that also is possible. Experimental method is a quantitative research method, but it has a very specific purpose and naturally it has a specific nature and that is why it uses very specific terminology. In this session we have seen all those terms which are associated with experimental method and we also saw, we also discussed variety of characteristics of uh, experimental method. There are many other aspects to experimental method. For example, there are variety of designs, experimental designs which a researcher must know. A researcher also must know while setting up an experiment, what are the threats, what are the challenges that the researcher must keep in mind so that the experiment which he sets up, the manipulation, the control which he or she wants to achieve is achieved. Some of these aspects we will be discussing in other sessions. Here please keep in mind that very specific terminology is used for any experimental design. Thank you.